How's it going, ladies and gentlemen? Mr. Donnie here again. This time we're going to take a look at 15.5 practice problems where we got to do some calculating equilibrium constants. Our objectives will be to use the equilibrium constant in stoichiometry to determine the equilibrium concentrations for compounds involved in a chemical equilibrium. All right, so number one is, uh, you know, given, given the equilibrium below, in an experiment, the concentration of CO was 0 0.20 molar and H2 was 0 0.42 molar at equilibrium. Given a KQ of 15.2 for this temperature, what is the concentration of CH3OH at equilibrium? All right, so first let's start with what the KQ expression would look like. So we know that it's going to be the concentration of the products, in this case CH3OH, to the first power all over the concentration of the reactants. We got CO to the first power, and then we got H2, which is going to get squared because of the two coefficient there. So now let's see, they told us what CO was, so check, we know that. They told us what H2 was, and they told us what KEQ was, and they're asking us to solve for CH3OH. So I like to rearrange everything before I deal with any numbers. So if I want to get rid of the CO on the right side and the H2 on the right side, I got to multiply both sides by concentration of CO and times by the concentration of H2 squared. So I'm going to end up with um, CH3OH concentration is going to equal the KEQ times the concentration of CO times the concentration of H2 squared. So now I know all these numbers and I can just plug and chug. So I'm going to move up here. So that equals, well, KQ is 15.2 times by the concentration of CO, which is that 0 0.20 molar, times the concentration of H2, which is 0 0.42 molar, which is going to get squared. When I plug and chug, I end up with 0.54 molar as my answer. So there you go. That's number one. Number two, hydrogen iodide is added to a reaction container and decomposes into molecular hydrogen and iodine shown below. When the system reaches equilibrium at a given temperature, the pressure of HI is 0 0.607 atmospheres and the pressure of H2 and I2 both equal 0 0.0450 atmospheres. What is the value for Kp at this temperature? All right, so again, let's start with the expression. Kp is going to be equal to the pressure of the products, in this case the pressure of H2 to the first power, times the pressure of I2 to the first power, because they both have coefficients of 1, divided by the pressure of the reactants, so the pressure of HI, which is going to get squared because of the two coefficient right there. So now they're asking us, hey, what is Kp? They're telling us the pressure H2, I2, and HI. So we know everything else on that side, so it's just kind of a plug and chug. So the pressure of H2 is 0 0.0450 atmospheres times, well, hey, that again, it said they have the same pressure, 0 0.0450 atmospheres for I2, and then divided by the pressure of HI squared. And they said the pressure of HI is 0 0.607 atmospheres, which is gonna get squared. So now I pick up my handy dandy calculator and I plug and chug, beep bop, beep bop, boop. I get 0 0.00550, uh, oh, no units on that because it's the equilibrium constant. So it's 0 0.00550. Number three, given the following equilibrium, there it is. During an experiment, 0.24 moles of CO and 0.24 moles of H2 were placed in a one liter vessel. At equilibrium, there's 0.15 moles of CO remaining. What is the KEQ for this equilibrium at this temperature? All right, so we're going to want to create what we call an ice box or initial change equilibrium. And then I'm going to go, all right, well, I start with CO. I react it with 2H2, and then I make a CH3OH. So initially it says, hey, we got 0.24 moles of CO and 0.24 moles of H2. And well, then we must have no CH3OH. Now the change, well they tell us at equilibrium there's 0.15 moles of CO remaining. So at equilibrium we got that much. So what was the change? Well I know I definitely used some up so it's a minus and then how do I go from 0.24 down to 0.15? Well 
0 0.09. So that's my change in CO. Now if I take a look at the ratio, for every one CO, I use up two H2. So the change in H2 is gonna be twice that. And this number, I can do the math in my head. So if I used 0 0.09 CO, I use twice as much H2, that would be 0.18, which tells me I end up with, at equilibrium, 0 0.06 moles of H2. All right, and if I take a look, well, how much uh, CH3 do I make? Well, it's a one-to-one -one ratio between CO and CH3OH, so I must have made, positive sign, 0 0.09, same change, which means at equilibrium, I have 0 0.09 moles of CH3OH. Now, if they want the KEQ, the expression is going to be, well, let's see, products CH3OH to the first power because of the coefficient of 1 divided by concentration of CO to the first power times the concentration of H2, but that gets squared because of the 2 coefficient. So now what's nice is they told us it's a 1 liter vessel. So if I'm dealing with moles, I know that, hey, molarity is moles per liter. Whatever the moles is, is also my molarity. So I have concentration of CH3OH, 0 0.09, divided by concentration of CO, 0.15, times by 0 0.06, which is going to get squared. When I pick up my handy-dandy calculator and I beep bop, beep bop, boop, I end up with 170 when you round it to two sig figs as my KEQ value. All right, number four, at a given temperature, Kp is this number, 0 0.086, uh, for the following equilibrium. There it is. Some solid NH4HS is put into a sealed container and allowed to reach equilibrium. Calculate the equilibrium partial pressure in atmospheres for ammonia, assuming that some solid reactant remains. So this, you know, assuming that some solid reactant remains tells you that equilibrium is achieved, right? You need both reactants and products in order for there to be an equilibrium. So let's start with the uh, the Kp expression. So I go, all right, Kp is going to be the pressure of the products. So pressure of NH3 gas to the first power times the pressure of H2S to the first power. And hey, look at this. It's a solid, so it's not going to be a part of our Kp expression. So there it is. They tell us what the Kp value is, and they want to know, well, what is the partial pressure in atmospheres for ammonia? Well, I know that if I use up X amount of the solid, I end up with X amount of NH3 and X amount of H2S because they're both one to one. So I know that the pressure of NH3 ammonia is going to be equal to the pressure of H2S, right? Because it's a one to one. They're going to be the same. So let me just call that X. So then I know Kp has to equal X times X, so X squared. And if I'm solving for x, I have to take the square root of both sides. That gets rid of the square on this side. So the partial pressure of NH3 is going to equal the square root of 0 0.086. And when I pick up my handy dandy calculator and I beep bop, beep bop, boop, I get 0.293 atmospheres, right? Because this, uh, yeah. All right. Number five. Given the equilibrium, there it is. If a in a one liter vessel at equilibrium N2O4 is 35% 30, by mass dissociated, what is the equilibrium constant? So let's start again with the, uh, the KEQ expression. All right, so KEQ equals the concentration of the products. We got NO2, which is going to get squared because of that two coefficient divided by the concentration of N2O4. All right, and if it's saying, hey, percentages, whenever you're dealing with percentages, assume 100. So if it's by mass, we're going to say we have 100 grams of N2O4. And if 35% of it is dissociated, that means we end up with 35 grams of NO2 and only 65 grams of N2O4 remaining, right? 35% of it dissociated. So now we need to convert this to moles. I have grams of N2O4. So I'm going to have to figure out, well, what is the gram formula mass of N2O4? And it's something like 92.02 .02 grams per mole. So when I convert that 65 grams, I end up with 0.706 moles of N2O4. 
And I do the same process for NO2. I go, all right, well, let me figure out the ground flow mass for NO2. It's 46.01. So when I divide 35 by 46.01, I end up with 0.761 moles of NO2. And what's nice again in this problem, they told us that the volume of the vessel is one liter. So the moles is also the molarity because it's moles per liter divided by one, it's the same number. So now I need to plug that into my KEQ, KEQ expression. Um, let's see, the product or reactants over, I'm sorry, products over reactants, the product being NO2. So it's 0 0.761, but that's gonna get squared, divided by N2O4, 0 0.706. And when I plug and chug, I end up with 0 0.820 as my KEQ value. All right, last one for this section. Given the equilibrium between hydrogen and iodine, there it is. During an experiment, the concentrations for H2 and I2 were both 0.152 molar, and the HI was 0.45 molar. What is the KQ? So again, let's start with the expression. KQ expression based on the equilibrium equation. The concentration of the product, so the concentration of HI to the second power because of the two coefficient divided by the concentration of the reactants. Well, there's H2 to the first power, and then there's I2 to the first power as well. Now, during an experiment, concentrations were both this uh, and this. All right, so I think this is just kind of a plug it in. We go, hey, what was the concentration of HI? They said it was 0.45 molar, and that's gonna get squared divided by the concentration of H2, they said it was 0.152 molar, and so was I2, 0.152 molar. And uh, now I just pick out my handy dandy calculator and I beep bop beep bop boop that, and I end up with 8.8 .8 as my final answer for the KEQ. All right, I hope you found that helpful. I'll see you in class. Okay, bye.